Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? I'm Marcus Coates Walker and I'm the Student Union President. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? I would say that my job entails a little bit of everything that goes on in the union. You've got to have a scope of what, everything that's going on and be willing to get involved with a little bit of everything. What happens in the average day in the life of the president? Uh, every day's different. One day you might have a couple of students walk through your door that takes up most of your day. The other day you might be working in the university on a number of different issues. And some of the days you might be at conferences. It's literally the most varied role, I would say. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? On a practical note, trying to work with my team to see what their plans were for the year so that I could have a, an idea of everything that they were doing. Um, so as we work through the year, I could kind of, if things were dropping off, um, I'd be able to pick up and see, make sure by the end of the year we're hitting the targets that we want, wanted as a team. What is the one thing you wish you had done in your role this year but didn't? This year has been absolutely manic so far. So the stuff that I've still got to hit that I haven't hit yet are probably some of the employability aspects like working in the university on um, getting an alumni networking system, things like that. So the rep for the next sort of four or five months, I'm going to be looking at increasingly employability prospects of college students and working in the university on that. What obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome? The main obstacles coming are probably a new vice chancellor in September and making sure that Cardiff Student Union is well recognised in his view as it is in the previous vice chancellor's view. And then probably uh, £9,000 fees. Um, we, we've all been second guessing what students are going to be like when they come to university with nine grand fees, but this person's got to deal with it first hand, so good luck to them. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? My name is Ollie Devon. Currently I'm the Athletic Union President. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? Very basically, um, I oversee the running of all things sport at Cardiff University and I'm the head of the Athletic Union, which is the body that governs all the sports clubs. What happens in the average day in the life of the Athletics Union President? There really is no average day, but I'd say it's broken down into kind of regular weekly meetings, um, as well as uh, students coming in with problems to see you as your as student representative, and then the events that go on throughout the year, and also planning your long-term projects that you try and squeeze in around all that. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? One of my key aims for this year was uh, developing the whole Team Cardiff brand within the AU. So the first thing I did was really sit down with my predecessor um, and we worked out a plan as to how to launch the brand this year, which was you know, really hitting the ground running and uh, it was a very exciting time over the summer. What is the one thing you wish you had done in your role this year but didn't? Well, there is there's, there's one thing that kind of crops up all year uh, that I've had a bit of a problem with, and it always comes down to money. With having 60 clubs taking part in a huge array of activity across the country, um, it'd be fantastic if the AU could just fund all of that. But unfortunately, we do need to ask students to pay. So one of the key things that I'd say that I wish I had done that is really look into ways of increasing funding. And the main thing would be looking at um, getting a headline sponsor. Um, we currently have a sponsor as part of the whole union package with Ensley, which gets the Athletic Union about £5,000 a year. I think that the AU is worth an awful lot more than that. And if I had my time again, I'd probably spend a little bit more time looking into what kind of revenue streams we could get out of sponsorship. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? My name is Nick Matthew. I'm currently the finance and commercial officer. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? My position was voted in a couple of years ago to offer financial transparency of the union's finances and to also lead on the environmental and sustainability matters of the Students' Union. What happens in the average day in the life of... 
Union Development and Internal Affairs Officer. Wake up at seven, bit of breakfast, and then into work. Answer some emails. Maybe it could be emails about the end of your event. The diary's then taken up probably with three or four hours of meetings throughout the day. And in between those, I'm working on my own projects. And again, these could be anything from doing the AGM reports to the end of your event planning. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? Well, you've got a month of handover, and that's where you'll learn everything, and you'll do a lot of one-on-ones with your predecessor. So for the new union development officer, that'll be with me, and we'll try and get them in a state whereby, come the 1st of August, they're ready to crack on and take on their own projects. What is the one thing you wish you had done in your role this year but didn't? The one that I was really keen to really push forward this year was the links with the alumni office um, but perhaps the progress hasn't been made that we wanted we kind of had this idea of this mass uh, alumni network where any student could get in touch with an alumni from their school their field and really get that career help it's been a lot more difficult than we thought and there seems to be a lot of politics surrounding it mostly to do with money what obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome The biggest obstacles that this organisation faces are, from a money point of view, Students' Union could do with some more money from the university. Whether or not they'll get it, that's an issue, and it's all up in the air at the moment. So the future of the Students' Union and the future of the kind of um, ability to run the level of services we do now really depends on that relationship. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? My name is Sam Reid and I'm the Academic and University Affairs Officer. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? I represent 29,000 students on education issues to the union and the university. What happens in the average day in the life of the Education and University Affairs Officer? My days can vary. Some days I can be in university meetings all day, um, representing students, uh, influencing university policy, working on projects with the university. Um, And then some days I can be based in the union, answering um, emails from student reps, doing project work with them, and doing general union work as well on the business and charity. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? The first thing I did was I went and met with the 27 heads of schools um, to try and gain an insight into the schools I hadn't already had had, an experience of. Um, This was really helpful for me because then I could use this information in my meetings and do a bit more research into what the different academic schools are doing and how their students are treated. What obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome? Making sure that everything that they say is qualified with evidence. People take you a lot more seriously if you can show um, evidence as to why you've said something about what students think. Too often student representatives are accused of only representing themselves, so you just got to be really thorough and make sure that everything comes from an evidence source. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? Hi, my name's Christopher Davis and I am the Welfare and Communications Officer at Cardiff Students' Union. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? About making students happy and healthy, but in the future the welfare and community role will also be about making sure that students engage with Cardiff as a city. It's an amazing city, we want them to feel at home. What happens in the average day in the life of... Welfare and Community Officer? Let me just assure the, uh, everyone who's listening there is no such thing as an average. But if I just give you an example of what I've done this week so you can understand how diverse it's been. Monday I went to Barry Island with some student volunteers and cleared up some rubbish. I was uh, writing a report with uh, the Head of Student Support Service and today, obviously as well as doing this, I've been in a number of meetings. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? 
The first thing that you do, uh, you join the organisation in July, but you have a handover process. So you have one month of handover, and that's revision, if you like. It's about what the company is all about, what it's like to be a director and a trustee. I mean, this company is a close to an £8 million organisation. As a trustee of the charity that serves 30,000 people, you need to know what your obligations and where you're responsible. What obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome? Exhaustion and just just sort of the, the, the sheer drama of it all, it, it, it's such a fantastic experience. Try to remember though that you know you are here obviously to do your degree and we don't want students putting their degree in jeopardy in running, um, but I'm sure that all students who, who engage in the elections process will have a fantastic time and as long as they embrace the spirit of it, it'll be amazing for them. As we say, get involved, love Cardiff and as long as they do that, it'll be wicked. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? My name's Harry Newman and I'm currently the Society's Officer. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? A Society's Officer is here to champion all non-sporting student-led activity in the Union shouting about all the good things that they do, developing the opportunities and nurturing the growth of the societies individually as well. What happens in the average day in the life of Society's Officer? My job's an interesting one. It's split sort of 50-50, I guess. Half of my week would be running the union generally and then the other half is kind of, I might wait for someone to come into the office who has got a problem with an event that they're trying to run or wants to start a new society. And I'm kind of the student representative side of the Guild of Societies. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? Once in the job, the first thing I did really was look through some of the student feedback. Storage was a big issue, as was dance space. So I thought I'd tackle dance space first and we uh, put some mirrors in one of the big meeting rooms upstairs, um, thereby making it kind of a bit more of an activity space so that activity-based groups and societies can make use of the proper nice floor in there and the mirrors on the walls. What obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome? I think they might come up with some kind of resistance to the guild fee. This is a fee which all society members must pay before they then have the right to join a society. So that will be a challenge, but I think really the society's officer is, a, is quite a free job in that you've got a budget of which not all of it is committed spend. So you can kind of have an element of flexibility over where the money goes. And that kind of gives you enough power within the organisation to sort of get on with things. It's the election guide for dummies. Your vote matters, so be in the know with Express Radio. Express Radio. It's the election guide for dummies. What is your name and what position do you currently hold? Hello, I'm Sarah Halpin and I'm the Healthcare Integration Officer. Can you sum up in a sentence what your job entails? My job is to try and integrate the students based at the Heath Park campus um, into the union in everything we do and try and take some of our services up there. What happens in the average day in the life of the Heath Park Campus Officer? The average day could be anything from university committees to meetings with students, helping them organising events, um, to going out there engaging with students, um, going up to the Heath Campus, seeing how things are going up there. Uh, it's a huge variety. No, no two days are the same. What is the first thing you do once elected into the position? I sat behind my desk, panicked a little bit, uh, text my predecessor just to check I was allowed um, and got on with it really. The first project I did was organising a, a Heath Freshers Fair so that was pretty scary um, but yeah it was exciting after a month's worth of handover you're ready to sit behind the desk and get on with it so exciting. What is the one thing you wish you had done in your role this year but didn't? In my manifesto I talked about um, improving the experience of students on placement as such, because this year has been so manic, I haven't got round to doing that yet, although we have data collected on it. What obstacles is the winning candidate going to have to overcome? It's still quite a new role. It's certainly going to be the fourth year it's, it's around. Because it's such a new role, there's still an awful lot more that needs to be done. 
but you can turn that on its head and make it a good thing. It means that everything you do will have a massive impact on the students. Um, so a few obstacles in terms of the university not being used to big changes, but those big changes make a big difference to students, so it's all good. It's the election guide for dummies.